We're about to get ready for TCR Europe qualifying for our two races here at a wonderful, wonderful Belgian venue that we've been to for many, many years and obviously is world famous for this weekend's Total Energy's 24 Hours of Spa, which for which we are supporting. Therefore, we kick off qualifying lunchtime here on Friday uh, so we can get our two races in before the 24 hours begins. Race one this evening, uh, race two lunchtime tomorrow. And we have a good entry uh, for uh, today's or this weekend's action. The usual uh, 21 cars with just one missing. Uh, and that is mainly thanks actually to uh, the World Touring Car uh, Cup. The WTCR cancelling their weekend uh, this weekend. They should have been in Adria, and that has allowed uh, our one-time championship leader, Mikhail Ashkina, uh, victory in the very first race of the season and two other podiums to his name, uh, to be with us, because usually his Cooper requirements would mean that he would have to be uh, over um, in Adria. But uh, because they've cancelled that, he can be with us, and so can Tom Coronel. And uh, we do have regulations to allow them to miss races. We didn't see Ashkina last time out in Zandvoort, uh, and therefore uh, Ashkina has lost his championship lead uh, to Franco Girolami uh, by uh, 11 points. And there is uh, the meandering uh, forests, the Valley Au Rouge, uh, where this circuit is based. And looking splendid, especially considering the Disaster that has happened around here uh, over the last couple of weeks with flooding. The circuit's been hit three times by flooding over the last 12 months. So parts of the circuit have been resurfaced. Uh, we've got uh, different tarmac in mainly around the, the La Source area. Uh, and our TCR cars based in the Formula One paddock don't have to go down through the endurance pits and therefore straight out onto the circuit uh, on time for uh, their qualifying one session. And then those top 12 in qualifying one uh, will go through into qualifying two where we will set uh, the pole position times. Remember the uh, top 10 set the grid for race one and then we reverse that top 10 uh, for race two. If you've got a good teammate, then slipstreaming can work pretty well for you, especially around the first and third sectors of the lap. Nils Langeveld, uh, sitting behind Mehdi Benani there, first two cars on the road. Benani uh, sits fifth uh, in championship, having uh, had a victory in Slovakia ring, the very first victory for the Hyundai Elantra. But hasn't been on the podium since Mehdi, and that's why he's down in fifth in championship. Behind Tom Coronel, uh, who uh, was with us uh, in Zandvoort, because uh, Ashkenau missed Zandvoort due to his electric touring car. Um, requirements for Cupra and between Zamvort and here in Spa we have announced that TCR Europe will have an electric uh, support race. The uh, ETCR Europe um, will start, I'm not sure whether it will start next year or the year after because at the moment there is only six cars uh, out there in the world of ETCR. But that was why we didn't see Ashkana last time. But in the regulations you can drop two scores um, and if you do drop your worst two scores for Ashkeno at the moment, that is a second and a sixth. Uh, so that would put him way ahead. Well, actually, sorry, no, that's a lie. It's the two, he's dropping the two scores in which he didn't appear uh, in Zambor. So that's his no score. So every score will count for Ashkeno as we go into the second half of the season. This is very much the midpoint. We've had three rounds, this is the fourth, and then we'll have another three rounds after that in Nürburgring, Monza, and Barcelona two of which we will support the SRO Endurance Championship. Um, and it's great to be on this package, which means uh, as we move forward, we will have fans both uh, here in Spa and uh, hopefully as we go to the Nürburgring in Barcelona, we'll be able to welcome fans back. And there's always a good crowd that come to the SRO events. So most cars out on circuit, but obviously a concern here for Jimmy Clare. Slight shake of the head. The Persia was very strong in practice, especially, weirdly, um, on the very fast parts of the track. Not so good in the middle section. The Honda was really strong in the middle section of the lap. Uh, Jack Young was the fastest man uh, in practice two, which is especially impressive considering uh, he was carrying his full maximum ballast after 
a great weekend uh, in Zambor of a, a second and then a ninth. One of those weekends where it was pretty mixed up. We had two very separate podiums. Coronel taking victory in race one, but retiring out of race two. He shared that podium with Dusan Borkovic and Jack Young. But then in the second race, we had Franco Girolami uh, on who took victory. Nils Langevaux second, and Isidro Caeas picked up his uh, first podium. Here is Franco, brother to Nestor, who is here to help him this weekend. He doesn't have a teammate this weekend, appears says, because Viktor Davidovsky is the man that's missing from our entry list. Uh, the team owner of PSS, uh, uh, hello, Victor. I'm sure you are watching. Uh, stuck in Macedonia, I'm afraid, because of COVID restrictions and travel. So he couldn't get himself to, to Belgium. And it's um, Belgium itself is quite difficult to get into at the moment. So all these teams have done a great job uh, to get here to the 24 hours of Spa. Oh, Jack Young facing the wrong direction. Hasn't quite got the temperature in the rear tires, perhaps. Now, whereabouts is that on the lap? My feeling is that uh, is Lecom. Yes, it is. And the uh, tow truck is looming, ready to pick him up. But I think he's got it running. He just needs to make sure it's pointing in the right direction. There is a bit of car that's been that's fallen off. So he has nerfed the tyre barrier. Oh, that's a real disappointment for Jack Young. He's done such a great job in practice. Um, yeah, the front bumper on the left side has been slightly um, remodelled, let's say. I think the inner wheel arch is also missing and something dropping, I think dropping out the bottom of the car. But yes, there's the contact with the barrier and a bit of car left behind. Oh, so that's a real shame for Jack Young. Just need to keep an eye on his temperatures. He was the fastest man through sector one on this first lap. Um, and obviously slightly overcooked it there. Right, over the line for the first time then. Time's coming in. This session, just 14 minutes remaining. So not many uh, chances to get lap times in because the laps time is a 2.31.6 for Girolami, who is the fastest of the five guys that have set time so far. Uh, does compare to our best uh, lap time, a 2.30 uh, in race trim, and a 2.28 is our overall lap record. But of course, we have changed tyre compounds uh, quite, re uh, quite frequently over the last couple of years. And the Yokohama was a very, very soft uh, tyre that was very fast across one or two laps, but just didn't last. The Hankook seems to be faster in some circuits. It was faster at Slovakia ring, for instance, but then in other tracks, like here, for instance, doesn't seem to be as fast. I had a good chat with Martin Reba last night. He was uh, questioning why the circuit seemed to be slower than even when they came here on a, on a damp uh, testing. Reba and the Brutal Fish team doing plenty of testing for KS uh, and for Jack Young. We've got 15 times on the board at the moment. And Jimmy Claret has now come out of the pit. So whatever the concern was in that Peugeot, uh, they've sent him and they're going to see if it works. Uh, I'll have a look out my window to see if we get Jack Young into the pit lane, but I would expect him to do so. And oh, what's happened to Reba here? Through the double gauche and pulling off. So he's experiencing an issue. That's not the double gauche at all. That is uh, Blanchiment. Uh, not a great place to park it up, Martin. Uh, not far. Uh, not far away from pits. That actually is not Martin Reba. That is Jack Young. So Young hasn't been able to get to the pits before the car is perhaps uh, overheated and he's parked it up to try and cool it off um, after the heat safe, of course. So that's disastrous for Jack Young's weekend. There is Reba, who's also off the track, but somewhere different. Uh, so that's his, uh, that's his teammate, Brutal Fisher, having a bit, of a, a bit of a session here so far. We're not even 10 minutes into it. Where's Kayas? Is he OK? He's fastest. Uh, so that's all right. But Reba uh, hasn't made contact with the wall and gets himself going again. And that was down at the Fania Chicane, by the looks of things. Full course yellow then to recover. And yeah, just the rear end just not sticking again. Same, probably the same thing that we had for Jack Young. And just trying to be a bit too optimistic. So full course yellow round 
at Blanchimont, one of the fastest parts of the circuit, where Yelmini here just approaching now, and very, very slow, but the graphics say it's gone green again, so they've cleared it, so we can get going again. But maybe he's just trying to create a bit of space, because he was in a, a group of four cars there, and he is at the back of that four cars. Um, so just to give him a bit more clear space, or oh, he's coming into the pits, because Callejas, Girolami and Langevelt are all in pit lane right now. Let's see what the Italian does. Yes, he swings it left, so he's going to go for another lap whilst the track is clear. And he is, at the moment, uh, actually slowest. So whatever he has done last time, 14 seconds off the pace, he hasn't got himself a clear lap yet. He's fastest through sector one and sector two, and then maybe caught that yellow flag and bailed properly out of it. Won't have the tyres to be able to do the same as what he managed uh, last time. Oh, and the back gets a little bit loose uh, through a rouge, but gathers it all up again onto the Kemmel straight. And how much did he have to come out of the throttle? Those tyres just cooling off. The temperatures aren't too bad here. It's a pretty pleasant day here at spa Francorchamps. Hard onto the brakes then, and he is two tenths up on the fastest, which is still Azidro KS. And Yalmini then actually not as fast as he's managed to do uh, last time. So he's, he's faster than Kayas, but a tenth slower than he managed on his last lap, which still stands as the very best sector one. Good opportunity to see the full lap here around Spa. Still fiddling around a little bit, not quite trusting the rear end of his Elantra through Dubla Gush. Kayes back in the pits, Martin Reber back in the pits, and <laughs> gives us a wave. The Spaniard looked after by Pepe Oriola. Oriola uh, engineering uh, and driver coaching is Idro Kayas. Last weekend was in Curitiba in uh, Brazil, doing his own racing. Great to have uh, Oriola back in a car. And look at that, that's a really mammoth time from Yelmini here, fastest of anybody through the middle sector of the lap, faster than he went uh, a lap ago. And is this going to be enough to get him solidly through so he won't have to then go into the pits and have a bit of a rush to get himself back out? He's got a car ahead of him. Uh, that is uh, Sami Taufluik, his teammate, the Moroccan. Taufluik needs to get out of the way here, which he does. Yelmini flings it right. Just missing the apex a little bit. Lots of understeer mid-corner there. Gathers it all up again. A little bit too hot, perhaps. Distracted by his teammate, who's gone into the pits. He comes to the line then. And Yalmini does go fastest, a, two, uh, a 2.31.388, uh, sorry, 2.31.178 is the fastest time. And that's just over two tenths faster than Azidro Kayas. So now, into the pits, get yourself a new set of boots and go again if you need to. Let's have a check in. Yalmini fastest, Kayer second, Girolami third, Bart fourth. Gavrilov's done well in fifth position, considering he missed most of free practice one. Uh, unfortunately, got a puncture and didn't, wasn't able to bring the car back. Uh, Clare, Teddy Clare in sixth, uh, Leonov seventh, Longavel eighth, Ashkenar only ninth, so the Cooper is struggling here. Banani in tenth, then Jimmy Clare in eleventh. There he is, and obviously he's a little bit off schedule because he took uh, six minutes to get out onto track but he is in the top 12 right, right now the people that are not uh, well Tafluik is in 12th Poussier 13th they had a Galash Reba Colombani Coronel uh, seven seconds back and then Homler in 18th Borkovic in 19th so I was really thinking that the Audis would be good and the two masters of the Audis Coronel and Borkovic are nowhere right now and unfortunately Jack Young uh, will start both races in 20th position. I mean, such a frustration. Now, I think Jimmy Clare will be coming into the pits. He had a good first sector, though, a 44-1-9. He 
He's already done one lap, but he might go for a second. The problem if he does go for a second is he won't get back into the pits, change tyres and get back out again before the end of the session. So really, if he wants a, another set of tyres on this, then he needs, to, uh, he needs to come in this time by. Still a push though, a 109 through the middle sector of the lap. He's 1.8 seconds off the fastest time right now. Yeah, the tyres are squealing, so he's still pushing. I oh, know. It's a push all the way to the in lap, all the way to the last corner. And perhaps he needs to, because actually he's going to be pretty tight on time once they've put the tyres on to get him back out again. But uh, the second wave then. Coronel, definitely one of the men that needs it. This is almost a home circuit to him. If he, uh, obviously Zanvor being his home circuit, being a Dutchman, but uh, spends a lot of time driver coaching and uh, racing here, whether it be in uh, modern GTs or uh, classics. He's done the six hours uh, classic race here a couple of times. David Hart. I don't know if he's uh, done much recently with uh, Coronel. Borkovic is the other man that really needs a push on. 14 seconds back, so he didn't get the lap, and maybe he was another man to get caught up in that yellow flag uh, for Jack Young. So got a good first and second sectors in, and then in the third sector had to back out of it. Borkovic towing his teammate around here. Borkovic is on a lap looking at his sector one time. So he came out of the pits a bit uh, earlier than Coronel, and Coronel slotted him behind, but will be one lap down. It's not a good middle sector though for Borkovic. 1.4 back off Yalmini. It's his best time through the middle sector, but it is uh, 1.4 seconds. It's getting good enough for eighth spot. Borkovic very used to TCR cars, but uh, generally had has driven the shorter wheelbase machines. And the Audi, the longest wheelbase car that he's driven, means he can get his long legs in it, but uh, it uh, has been a bit more of a challenge for him to get it rotated and really feel the best. Big understeer through the last corner there. Across the line, there are improvements. Homelers goes up to eighth position, Borkovic to ninth spot, and now Coronel will start a lap just behind. Now, at four minutes and 13 seconds, four minutes and nine seconds remaining. Does mean that they can get uh, another lap in if they want to, if Dushan thinks he's got the pace, or he can benefit from a slipstream going up towards Lecom. That would be the best place for it, as long as he doesn't then get held up going through the middle section of the lap. Whoa, the back end of Coronel's car bottoming out there, the rear wheel, rear left wheel scuffing uh, the bodywork. came here back in the TC1 days, the uh, power steering used to lock up when they bottomed out at the bottom of Eau Rouge. And so you get this moment where you, you suddenly couldn't turn the car. You had to wait for the power steering to re-engage. Borkovic leaving black lines everywhere. As, uh, those rear wheels scrabble for grip. And you can see the Coronel's getting closer and closer. He's going to be on the radio asking his team to get Dushan out of the way. And indeed, Dushan pulls to the left-hand side. So. Is Dushan going to get in? He's now in 10th position as Ashkenar has improved his time. And he really could well be on the bubble here to get into the second part of qualifying. If he does, he'll be targeting to try and get pole position for race two. I wonder how much benefit Coronel got from Borkovic down the Kemmel straight. Slightly uphill for a kilometre, that is. So these TCR cars, the slipstream really does help. Nice and tidy through Fanyes. Got Mato Homola, was, it, was that to Gaiash ahead? I think it's Gaiash ahead, actually. He's down in 17th spot. Coronel is last at the moment, and he hasn't got himself a lap time. Seven seconds off. Ah, so that's good. 0.7 back in sector two. That would actually put him up in fourth position, such as the gaps. If he can maintain that. The Addy had a great BOP. Uh, in Zanvoort, but uh, has been reined in slightly. And of course, Coronel, since Zanvoort, has had a couple of rounds in the newer Audi. 
Banani now just ahead has gone fastest. But that's OK. He was safely in to Q2 anyway. We're concerned with the likes that can't get through as Galash goes up to 14th, so he won't. Coronel sixth. Should be safe. Should be safe there. Homola fourth ahead of him. And now here are the brutal fish boys. Marta Rida and Kayas. Now, Kayas knows his way around here, so is this Reba, uh, who's down an 18th spot, following Kayas to try and find a bit more pace? He's three seconds off uh, the Banani pace and two and a half behind Kayas. Gavrilov's had a great first sector. Wow, look at that. Four tenths of a second better. This Audi, same Audi that's being run by Come To You Racing, which is a Belgian team. But at the moment, the best Audi is coming from the little VLC team. Gavrilov to the line and goes up to fourth position. Great stuff from the Russian. Really has got that car working for him. It wasn't particularly fast in the middle sector. It was half a second off Yelmini, and he was actually slower than he's been before in the final sector. But he did a great effort in the first sector of the lap. We just now wait to see if race control have uh, deemed it an illegal lap. I mean, I'm not suggesting anything, but race control have been very, very um, on it when it comes to track limits, both through a Rouge and through here as well, turn nine. Nangevelt and Banani together. Banani's already set a lap, so I don't think he's on a push lap here. Uh, Nangevelt in 11th is on a push lap. So won't be wanting to get out of the way of Banani. And maybe it actually has been the other way around. Has Banani got out of the way of Langeveld? We'll get the second sector for Langeveld in a moment. And it's not good. It's a second off uh, his teammate Banani. And that is not a huge improvement uh, at the moment. As I say, he is in the top 12. Q1 has finished now. Flag is out. So this is his last opportunity to improve his time. Clare has come across the line and uh, improved, but not into uh, the top 12. Bernardi will be going into the pits, I imagine, but what about the teammate just ahead? Can Langevelt improve his time from 11th position? He does go up to 10th spot. So one place improvement from Langevelt. And that should be enough to get him through. Here is Sami Tauflik. Tauflik's in second. Wow, I, didn't, I missed that. He's just seven hundredths of a second slower than his Moroccan teammate. So it's Morocco 1-2 uh, in qualifying one. It doesn't matter for the top 12, sadly. And uh, so we now await to see whether Borkovic cannot improve. So Borkovic is out. 15th spot for Borkovic. He's taken the flag. Uh, who else might be improving? Well, Martin Reber in the Brutal Fish. He's following his teammate, Isidro Callejas. They're on the final sector of the lap now. Tauflik uh, has been faster through first and second sectors, but it doesn't matter. He'll go into the pits, save those tyres for the race. But uh, the, the main story here is Martin Reber, the owner of Brutal Fish. There's Nicolas Bart, who is on the bubble in 12th position. He could do with improving, but he won't. And he, if he, uh, if Reba improves into the top 12, it's Bart who will miss out on going through into Q2. Reba to the line then, and where does he improve to? Oh, 14th. He doesn't get through. Bart is safe. Bart to the line then. Does he improve his time? No, he doesn't. P12. But. There is no one behind him that's going to improve. Gilles Colombani is on track, but won't improve. Uh, and uh, Evgeny Leonov is 13th, so just misses out in his Cupra. And actually is already in the pits. So then, uh, Hyundai 123 with Banani, Tauflik and Yelmini. Ominous for our Q2. But we wipe those times all the way down to 12th position, and they will have to go again in Q2. Those that will miss out, Evgeny Leonov in 13th position, Martin Reba 14th, Claire 15th. Borkovic will be very disappointed down 16th spot. 1.6 seconds only back from Banani. So the field spread is pretty tight, isn't it, considering how long this lap is. 
Galash 17th and Poussia. Let's have a look. So here is the confirmed results. Hyundai 123, as I say, and then really good result from Klim Gavarov in fourth. Isidro Kaez fifth, best of the Hondas. Claire gets himself in, Teddy that is. Ashkena only seventh, Homola will be happy with eighth. Franco Girolami ninth, Coronel in with 10th position. Will he be targeting a pole position for race two? Nils Langeveld, his countryman, 11th, and Nicola Bart, 12th. Those that miss out then, Leonov, Reba, Jimmy Clare, who definitely had problems, didn't he, uh, in this session. He was late out of the pits in his Peugeot. And the Peugeot looked strong uh, in practice. But most of all, the most disappointed will certainly uh, be Dusan Borkovic. Only 16th, he'll start 16th for both sessions. Uh, of our races this afternoon and tomorrow. And Jack Young down in 20th position will be very unhappy with that after P1 in FP2. So whilst we wait for everyone to recollect themselves back into pit lane, this is the highlights of our first session. And uh, Jack Young did make contact right front and his uh, teammate and team boss Martin Reba uh, looped it round at Fania, so it was a bit of a session for Brutal Fish, but Callejas at the midpoint of the session was fastest. Then it was a turn of Italian Yelmini with a clear track ahead of him. He was able to go faster uh, than his Hyundai teammates. And the little Peugeot running well. Then the time to change tyres, get some new boots on the car, perhaps in the first uh, part of the session you run on used tyres, but certainly the second part of the session you go out on the fresh ones, and it was good enough uh, for... Oh, there was Nils Langeveld making a mistake then with Banani behind him, and he was lucky to get through, wasn't he, uh, Langeveld, with that mistake? Banani behind him, and it's a 1-2-3 for Hyundai going into Q2. Carl 162 under investigation. Dusan Borkovic has been naughty, but it doesn't really matter because he's uh, not in our second session. So... If he loses his best time for track limits uh, in Q1, that will just compound his frustration from the session. The rumble of the two-litre turbos in the pit lane, getting ready to go out for our 10-minute session. The green flag and light at the end of pit lane. Uh, well, actually, saying that, the light at the end of pit lane looks like it's red. But uh, the timer has already begun. So we are already a minute into the session according to my timing screen and according to the clock that uh, appeared. Huh. Do we have a delay in the session? Yes, we do have a delay in the session. Yeah, so we won't be going uh, until we've got another minute. So the clock has been reset back to 10 minutes. And we will have a full 10 minute session. Usually you see the TCR cars like to go as soon as that green light is on. And can they get two runs in um, with changing the tyres? It would be very, very tight. I don't know if they would, actually. So this could just be a one-run thing. But as per usual, they all go out at the same time and all trip over each other on the first lap, um, such as touring car uh, qualifying sessions. And it's actually great to have you along because uh, we haven't had many sessions of qualifying uh, broadcast for you. So thank you for joining us. I um, hope you're enjoying qualifying, and thank you to the guys at, the, at uh, SRO TV for putting this on for us. Kjell One-time leader of the Electric Touring Car Championship after the first weekend in Vallelunga. Works Cooper driver both in that and in the World Touring Car Cup, and representing Cooper here for Volcano. Partly is like a driver coach also uh, to Evgeny Leonov, who owns a team. Um, there's plenty. We've got a couple of uh, owner drivers here. So Martin Reba owns Brutal Fish. Leonov owns Volcano. And um, Davidovsky owns PSS, although Davidovsky not with us. So there's the um, air temperature. A very pleasant 22 degrees. There is a little cloudburst forecast, but I think that's for Saturday evening across our weekend. So shouldn't be a concern for the TCR boys. No wet needed. There's Jakim Galash. Forgot about Jakim Galash. He's also a, uh, an owner driver from uh, the Czech team Yannick Motorsport. They uh, do a lot of hill climbing, uh, Yannick Motorsport. Quite a big thing um, over in 
Central Europe. And actually, if you look at the FIA uh, Hill Climb Championship, uh, many of the events happen in Slovenia, Slovakia, that kind of an area. Quite nuts, actually, if you don't know your hill climbing. Get yourself on YouTube and, and have a watch. It's pretty bizarre. Not bizarre, nuts. Nuts is a better word than bizarre. Right, so we've not got everybody out on track at the moment. We've got a um, couple of cars staying in pit lane. Franco Girolami, um, no, he's out on track now. So I think there's kind of two batches of cars that we've got out on track. Now, a Hyundai and Sevlo Racing here are going to play a bit of strategy with Slipstream. They might be doing two push laps. The chirp of the turbo as they uh, come around the middle part of the lap. All four of the Elantras are through into our second part of qualifying. Coronel only managing to get himself just in. So he, I think, will have looked at that and thought, now nah, it's going to be hard to get it's be hard to get the pole position. There are points, of course, for qualifying. Uh, you do get 10 points uh, for pole position. So for the championship haul, it's quite important. But ultimately, if it's not possible, strategy-wise, perhaps it's better to target uh, pole position in Q2, which basically means um, being 10th in this session for a pole position in race two, I should have said. So the Hyundai's are together, but further back, everyone seems to be pretty spread out. Coronel trying to tag on to Yelmini. His teammate Nicolas Bart miles behind, really uh, on his own. And here we go then. Sami Taufluik leads his uh, mentor and countryman, Mehdi Benani, second position. And then just behind them is Nils Langebelt, who may pick up a double toe from these two. But you don't want to be tripping over each other. I'm surprised to see Sami Taufluik ahead of Mehdi Benani here. But maybe Sami will pick up a slipstream for the second lap. It's a bit of a risky strategy. But they are, I don't know, they're not quite close enough to, to pick up slipstreams, actually. Sami's had a really good run through Eau Rouge there. And, uh, yeah, not quite close enough here. Maybe down in Blanchemont they will do it. But uh, giving themselves enough breathing space so in the middle part of the lap, they won't be falling over each other. Sami Taufler with the best first sector of the three cars that have completed that first sector. Yalmini a tenth off it, and Coronel three tenths back again. So Coronel really struggling in that Audi uh, on the higher speed sections of the lap. It was good in the middle sector, but not necessarily in the first and the last. I wonder whether VRC and Kim Glavarov used an extra set of good tyres to get himself into Q2. Gavrilov uh, just completing the first sector, and still, Taufelik, the first man on track, is the fastest man through that first sector of all of those that have completed. We're still waiting for Nicolas Bart, we're still waiting for Teddy Claret, and Isidro Kayes and Girolami, the two Hondas. And now they all complete, and yeah, Taufelik is still good, but it's a long middle sector, over a minute long. If you can get yourself into the nines, then that's a good one. Sami Taufelik, an eight, an eight, two. Banani, an eight, three. Langebelt, a nine, five. So Langebelt really has fallen off the back of these guys. Banani can't even keep up with his younger teammate. Taufelik on a really good lap here. Just a little bit loose through Blanchemont, four wheels over the white line, but the curb he was on, so shouldn't be a problem. Oh, he's gone deep into the final chicane, Sammy Tavlowick. All of that effort made and a completely messed up bus stop chicane. And is it going to be enough to hold on to the pole position provisionally? With four minutes remaining, they'll go again, and Tavlowick is second behind Banani. Banani three tenths of a second faster in the last sector alone. Taufelik's going to have to go again. He's just going to have to push again. Langebelt slower than those two ahead. He's one second slower, meaning Coronel can slot in just ahead into third position. Nicolas Bart was the fastest man of anyone through the first sector of the lap. He's on his own at the back of the field. The Belgian, whose father owns Come To You Racing, a local Belgian team. 
And here comes Gavrilov, only seventh position uh, for the Russian in his Audi, 1.2 back. Yelmini bailed out of his lap, so he's 6.6 uh, .6 back. I wonder whether he, Coronel caught him, and that's why Coronel's lap wasn't as good as it should have been. Here is Coronel's teammate, though, and Nicola Bart was the fastest of anyone through the first sector, but he's given away time in the middle sector of the lap and super sideways, four-wheel drifting through Blanchiment, and that'll be giving away time as well. What can he do in the Audi? Coronel only sixth position, properly hooks up the apex and more. Very, very aggressive on the curves. He'll be very happy if he can get in front of his much more experienced teammate. And over the line for third position, Bart will be happy with that. But there are people behind him that can go faster. Banani going faster again. Here he is. Half a second faster in the first sector alone because of that slipstream, no doubt, from Sami Taufluik. Three tenths of a second faster than Sami. So Banani's going to cement his uh, pole position here. And this will be it. They will be able to push again, but the tyres won't take it. They're going to have the time to do it. I wonder whether they will sw swap around. Banani is always talking about being here for Sami, being here for Morocco. Champion last year, but gave it to Sami, basically said, it's for my teammate, it's for my mentor, it's for Morocco. And at the moment, Morocco is 1-2. Going into Q, uh, going into race one here at Spa Francorchamps. To the line then, Banani, can he improve his time? He goes across the line and he does improve. By three tenths of a second, he keeps himself three tenths of a second ahead of Taufluik, who does improve also. But what about the teammate further back? I don't think Langevel can do anything. No, he can't. He stays in seventh. What about Coronel and Yelmini? Have they finished their laps? Coronel has, not as fast. Yelmini goes fastest. Yelmini crossing the line, the Italian, and he's taken away the pole position from Banani by four tenths of a second. Incredible lap from the Italian. And his only lap to be able to do so. I don't think we're going to see any more improvements from these guys. An improvement from Homola. Homola in the old style Hyundai has gone faster than Taufluik. That's a great lap from Matto Homola. They've really struggled with that, I, uh, with that I30 for whole of this season, but it seems as though they've got it running here. Homolo with so many years of experience, despite his age. And there is our pole man, Yelmini. Coronel is only 10th position. We're still waiting for others to come across the line. There's a gaggle of cars coming towards the chicane uh, now, including Ashkenar. Teddy Claret was part of that too, and Teddy Claret in seventh position. Where is Ashkenar? Here he comes. Nicola Bart's come across the line and not improved. He stays in fifth. And of this gaggle, nobody is faster through that third sector of the lap. They were fine through the first two sectors, but nobody's improved in the last sector. Including Girolami, who stays sixth. Now, there's no improvements from the guys who have already completed the first sector of the lap this time through. Although, actually, I say it, I tell a lie here. Coronel's being able to improve, and Coronel has now dropped uh, down to 11th. So Coronel will, if he stays where he is, be 11th for both of the races, and that'd be hugely disappointing. Klim Gavlerov in the little local VRC, or not local team, sorry, but a Russian um, kind of home team, if you like, VRC, and they've got the pole position. They're faster than him. Faster than Coronel has got all the experience around here. Coronel's not fast in the middle sector. That's a great effort from VRC and Klim Gavrilov. He was looking fast yesterday in practice before he had his puncture. And to claim the pole position ahead of Coronel, who carries on. So Coronel seeing if he can just get a tenth of a second to take it away from the Russian. But he can't. He takes the checkered flag, and it was a tenth slower, in fact, for Coronel. The Almini was, a, was not able to improve either. And it's not a surprise, really. Now, Franco Girolami is on a faster first sector of the lap. 
And it might be because he's picking up a slipstream from Ashkenaz. These three together with the Kayas and the other Honda behind. He's also faster than they've been through that first sector of the lap. And I wonder whether that's because they've kind of dragged each other along. But the middle sector will be the Taytail. And again, Girolami and Ashkenaz are better. So we might see some improvements here in the last dying seconds of this session. Ashkenaz leading the three. Girolami saying, thank you very much. I'll take your slipstream. Sixth position at the moment. That'll be a row three start for Girolami, our championship leader, remember. And in fact, these two, first and second in the championship coming here, if you ignore the drop score thing. Oh, Franco Girolami bails out of it. Check a flag from Ashkenar. And Ashkenar does improve and gets himself up into fourth position. I think that was a mistake from Franco Girolami. I think he could have perhaps improved his time. And Ashkenar puts himself on row two for our first race this evening. And that will be alongside Matto Homola. What a result for Matto. Super happy for the Slovakian. That really is big for the, uh, the older Hyundai. It's the newer Hyundai, though, that occupy the front row of the grid. A young Italian in his first season of TCR Europe. Felice Yelmini is your pole man. Somewhere still out on circuit as well. With Benani, who is uh, into the pits. And it will be a Hyundai Elantra all lockout at for our first race this evening. Yelmini and Banani, and then Matto Homler and Ashkenar on row two. Sami Tauflik on row three, sharing that with the first of the Audis, Nicola Bart, the local man. Then the first of the Hondas is Franco Girolami, sharing with the first of the Peugeots, Teddy Clare. Isidro Cayes and Klim Gavrilov will be on row five, but that will be the front row of the grid for our second race on Saturday lunchtime. Coronel and Nils Langevelt, the two Dutchmen, will share the sixth row of the grid for both of our races. Real disappointment for Coronel. Come to you, racing have not got their car nailed. Look, look, the big gaps, big, big gaps between Yelmini, who was four tenths up on Benani. And only uh, a second separating our top six. So, so make sure you join us um, this evening, which is uh, off the top of my head, about 6.30 this evening, local time here in Belgium. Uh, of course, we'll be streaming on YouTube, uh, where we are right now, um, and across Facebook as well. Uh, and we should be a nice evening, just like this. So make sure you join us and see how we get on uh, from spa Francorchamps. champs It's race one tonight, and qualifying has been here, thanks to SRO TV for broadcasting it. And it was the Hyundai Elantras that seemed to have got themselves in the sweet spot. Banani and Taufluik really setting the pace together. The two Moroccans working together. Oh, that was a nice little moment from Teddy Claro, really pushing it and uh, Ashkana getting out of the way. But uh, the Italian on his own, Felice Yelmini. Oh, hang on a second. If that was his fast lap, that could be investigated. Keep up to date on social media from the TCR series and TCR Europe, because uh, if there was anything that happened, woohoo, that was a big one, um, then we'll let you know if there's any penalties given. But from me, Ben Consiguros, for now, uh, have yourself a very pleasant day. Bye-bye.